So, Lex Friedman uh, just dropped a podcast interview with Trump, and I screen recorded the intro because I feel like there's some key things there that Trump is right about, even though I'm an anti-Trumper, I still like to give credit where credit's due, you know? But, that being said, let's get to the intro! Woo! In the flame, you just gotta go. At some point, this candle, I gotta blow. I guarantee you talk shit and let's see who wins this race. I'm gonna play the intro, because it's just a mashup he made of different clips throughout the podcast, and I wanted to go over that one by one, because I think there's a couple good points made there that people don't seem to realize. Uh, either because of the media mechanisms in this country or whatnot, but let's just play it. If you know this, but some people call you a fascist. Yeah, they do. So I figure it's all right to call them a communist. Yeah, they call me a lot worse than I call them. A lot of people listening to this, myself included, that doesn't think that Kamala is a communist. I believe you have to fight fire with fire. Politics is a dirty game. It is a dirty game. It's certainly true. How do you win at that game? They suffer from massive Trump derangement syndrome, TDS. And I don't know if they're, it's curable from their standpoint. I think uh, we would probably have a better world if everybody in Congress took some mushrooms, perhaps. First of all, medical marijuana has been amazing. It's been, I, I've had friends and I've had others and doctors telling me that it's been absolutely amazing. The list of clients that went to the island has not been made public. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? The following is a- The first point that was addressed uh, was the fascist versus communist remarks. Now, I can understand reasons for both of these things, and um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go over that real quickly. I'm gonna start off with the word fascist. So when people typically refer to fascist ideas or, um, or ideological fascism, what they mean is the ability to shut down political dissent. Now, do I think Trump uh, falls under that to a degree, but it's a lot more complex. So right now, the dichotomy we have is we have the right, who narrative-wise, you can put NAR for narrative, seems a lot more normal, right? I would say, I'm gonna go normal uh, TP, normal talking point. So like, the idea of, hey, you should go to church, we should go back to, like, Christian roots. We should ban abortion because we should moralize picking out arms and legs out of the womb. Like, it's not a thing we should celebrate. Um, and I'm personally for that. I think there's exceptions to where, like, if the fetus, due to medical complications or something, is going to kill the mother, it's entirely different. Um, uh, like, I believe it was the case in Texas where a woman bled out because she couldn't get it. Like, that's that shit's tragic. And I think, like, for those circumstances, we should have exceptions. But outside of that, I genuinely think it's not something we should be like, oh, yeah, get an abortion. No. Uh, it should be there's medical necessities for medical necessities sake, right? And most people, like, they, they think this, like, they, they believe it's normal because it is. Like, and you also have the anti... LGBT rhetoric, and again, like, you can say what you want about it, like, do I think there should be legal restrictions on, like, who, what you do in your bedroom? No, but I could also understand people's concern, because the values of this country are changing for, at a very rapid pace, and I understand why there's a lot of people who don't like it. Like, I don't like it personally. I hate the fact the left does this. Uh, because, again, we're about to get into part number two of the narrative. So, I'm going to say tanky slash commie ideology ideology I have a bunch of the spelling. You, like, like, you get what I'm saying. Like, uh, ideas. Okay, like, so tanky such comedy ideas are really bad too, right? Um, it 
is a dehumanizing ideology because all it focuses on are what groups do rather than the individual human beings, which I think is disgusting. It's why, for example, I hate the fact the left is like, oh yeah, Hamas, freedom fighters. No, they're a terrorist group that tried to genocide the Jewish population. You fucking idiots. Uh, a part of that is it's anti-American. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, when all you do, okay, we're about to erase this. When all you do is call people racist, homophobic, transphobic, etc. So like anything in that vein, like like uh, sexist, whatever the fuck. When you don't do it in circumstances where it's deemed a uh, necessity, like for example, I would say someone who goes out and lynches black people is a racist, right? But the idea of systemic racism is complete horse crap because we have the 1964 Civil Rights Act, so if this stuff does happen on an individual level, I 110% support you suing the government for that. Racial discrimination is bad, but when you weaponize the term, it leads to the downfall of what people believe is racist, right? Because then people stop caring, like the boy who cried wolf and call everything racist. Nothing is racist. Uh, same thing with homophobic terms, etc. And that's why, like, the left is such a fucking cancer fest, in my opinion. That's why I, that's why I hate using left and right, because find what you have now is hipsters slash, uh, tanky LARPers. LARPers. So just people who cosplay being a communist is like an aesthetic, which communism is disgusting, I've already said this already, versus corporate control. That's what's going on right now. And because these people, okay, are hated individuals, everybody hates hipsters, everybody hates communists, okay? These people genuinely suck. And they suck so bad that what happens is it makes something like this, corporate control, right, seem feasible, okay? It's palatable because these people are such massive suck holes, these people end up gaining power, and these people end up starting to uh, erase your rights, to implement horrible, horrible economic policy, um, and just, you get a bunch of shit that happens when you vote these people, but if people don't know about the policy, they will vote for these people because it's hipsters or these people, basically. So yeah, do I think Trump has fascist tendencies? Yeah, I would say so. But I would also say Kamala Harris has communist tendencies as well uh, because of something like go P C, okay? Price controls. That usually, 9.9 9 times out of 10, is implemented in what's called a command economy. Command economy, okay? That is what shit sucks, okay? Command economies are dog water, okay? Command economies suck really hard because it's just antithetical to what a flourishing economy is, which is in areas that do not, so we're gonna go D, N, for do not require government require subsidies to operate, okay? So, outside of stuff that requires subsidies to operate, liberalization of the market is the best way. So, at least from my eyes and the way I'm viewing it right now, if we wanted to implement a Medicare system, like a Medicare for All system, 
because we don't have the money right now, because ultimately we subsidize uh, private insurance by the tune of billions of dollars a year, and uh, again, I'm against private insurance, but right now we have to fix uh, certain aspects. So, like, one I would say uh, would be we should try first to be price transparency. Okay? Which is something Bernie Sanders, I believe, is pushing for right now on the federal level. I think this would be the first aspect. So we can see what prices work with what and what will help stay afloat the best. The, um... So, like, again, like, this is for a public sector ideology. Uh, that's what you want. You want the most cost-effective thing because it's a... Because outside of this, it's a requirement, okay? So for stuff like this, this is all public sector areas where it... Were, uh, sorry. Public sector is when you take off the do not. Um, it's areas that require subsidies. So like health insurance, I would say, like, uh, right now, energy, uh, drilling, we subsidize fossil fuel companies. Oh, fuck ton. Uh, to the tune of, I think, trillions of dollars actually uh, which is why I'm a big part of green and renewable energy because that way we're not having to spend money on those subsidies and we can invest that somewhere else uh, but we need infrastructure to be built and in order to do that you need to raise wages raise wages RW there's uh, multiple different factors to this um, to, uh, by the way to match inflation because inflation is just the uh, inflation we're going to go I for inflation we're going to go rate of devaluization, so RDV. That's all inflation is. And so, when the government prints more money, because they don't have, because the dollar is the value to an extent, that is how economies collapse, right? So, I don't want that. I don't want my uh, the American economy going to the shitter. But these are all things that outside of, you know, private sector, which is areas that, requ uh, that do not require subsidization to operate, this is kind of what you want. And so in these areas, you have private sector operations would include uh, things that help benefit that is liberalization, right? And so in markets that do not require subsidies to stay afloat, liberalization is the best form of driving prices down. Because what that does is, uh, for one, it incent. Let's just go took all of this. The incentive uh, would be to lower uh, production costs. So I'm going to put LPC. Okay, lowering production costs, so you can have uh, opportunity to lower prices. Okay, so this is what you want in primarily uh, a private sector style portion of the economy. Uh, which is, again, an economy that does not require subsidizations to stay afloat, meaning you can do without. Um, and so, uh, lowering pr uh, lo uh, lowering pr uh, product cost, which would in turn lower um, lower the uh, the amount that you pay. So, in essence, the over uh, the price of everything. Oh, which the right here, and then which in turn makes things. So, and then this aspect, you you probably have. Um, of uh, efforts of workforce. So EWF is what we're to do, because when the workforce is paid adequately uh, to do the work, they're usually a lot more passionate, are a lot more uh, willing to do it, um, and so forth. And then I would say the fourth portion to that would probably be um, uh, added uh, union accountability. So what happens in the private sector is companies are typically incentivized to give money to lobby the government for coverage. When they lobby the government, that hurts this entire process because it's the, the idea of liberalization means anyone can start up a business, right? They can do all these things, right? They can put in the work to grow that business and they, they can, again, take advantage of the uh, lowering production costs, the um, the uh, the offloading of you know of, uh, certain uh, certain aspects of the company. So maybe you may you may pay one group more than the other based on uh, the operating costs, etc. And uh, where you need to do the money, uh, where you need to invest in more and less, uh, which again 
uh, drives the effort of the workforce, which again, unions help hold the uh, government accountable uh, and help hold corporations accountable and helps this consistent fighting of each other. Because if one side gets too, so if unions get too big, what you have is socialism. Uh, when corporations get too big, what you have is an oligarchy, which is where we're heading right now in the United States. They typically associate with, I guess, someone on the left, even though I hate those terms that earlier. Uh, I do agree that Trump derangement syndrome is absolutely real. Um, because what you have is you have people who think this guy is a racist, a Nazi. Um, they think he's all these different meaningless, at least I would say devalued terms to such a massive extent. It puts, uh, it puts like, what's that movie where like they, they put the people on the, another planet and they basically control everything, uh, like whatever. Okay, like, the, like that makes those people look like impoverished in comparison, okay? So, because that's just how broke these ideas are. Like, like these are just broken people upset about some nonsense bullshit, okay? If you believe this shit, you probably have TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. However, there is also criticism you can make of Trump that I've pointed out on multiple occasions, like methods, I'm gonna say, oh, stay in Mexico. So sim, okay, stay in Mexico. I personally don't like executive orders. Not a fan, I would rather the government, the, con the uh, congressional process, the Senate process, do all of that. I, I'm critical of Biden for the same thing. I just, I'm not a fan of executive orders. Um, the other form of criticism I have of Trump is the Tax Cuts and uh, Jobs Act. So the TCJA. Uh, I'm not a fan of lowering the corporate tax rate. Um, I, I think that if you benefit from the opportunities given in this country, you have a more of a responsibility to pay it back to the country. That's just the way I view it. And so... I think the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is a uh, hit to that, ide that type of ideology, but that's just me personally. And then the last form of criticism I have is the, I'm gonna put lack of um, congressional slash Senate um, uh, policies. So Trump really couldn't pass much during his first term. And me personally, I don't think you should get credit for a well-functioning economy when you didn't pass anything to take credit for. Now, I personally would give that to the second term of the Obama administration and the first term as well to, re to rebuilding it, but again, to each their own. Like, I, again, I, that's just my, my ideology is you can't have Trump being blocked from everything and then hailing him as this great policy dude at the same time. I just think they're antithetical to each other. That's just me. Now, as you guys may know, I have a medical marijuana card, so obviously I'm in favor of medical marijuana. Okay, I'm just going to MMJ for that. Um, because I think medical marijuana, to me at least, is a happy medium, okay? I don't think you should restrict the ability to buy marijuana with a medical card, but I think that uh, it should be medical. Like, for example, I, you can't go to the like, you can't go to the store and buy, like, Abilify, right? There are certain things that just have side effects and are generally not good outside of prescription basis. I think marijuana is the same thing. N not the biggest fan of recreationally. It wouldn't be bad, but I think it does have a lot more negative connotations to it. Um, so we're going to go rec, and we're going to go, uh, and then we're going to go um, zero, um, and... J O for zero uh, medical marijuana uh, medical marijuana job like opportunities and stuff like that. I think both of these things are uh, negative in, uh, negative comparisons to the MMJ stuff. I I um, again I think same thing with like mushrooms. I I've, there's studies that have shown it helps veterans with PTSD when they take small doses, really small doses like a Dalex. It helps calm, do something neurologically to where it helps veterans with PTSD. Like, there's a bunch of stuff like that. Like, the marijuana helps with my Tourette's and helps me sleep at night. And so it's like, it helps me kind of stay focused on things. Um, but that being said, that's uh, pretty much uh, what it comes down to. Uh, I think a lot of what Trump does, honestly, policy-wise, is just Obama stuff. Uh, that's why I personally am not a fan of his. 
I, I, I don't think he's someone that can pass laws, generally. Um, I don't think he's someone that really possesses the ability to negotiate effectively and on a domestic level. And I, I don't worry really too much about international policy uh, because, like I said in a previous video, uh, I think the U.S. is unbeatable. Even if every single country came together, I think the U.S. would be just overpowered. It's, if you want to watch my Ukraine video on that, I'm probably going to link it in the, in the pinned comment or the description, uh, because I go over pretty much why, even if Russia wanted to attack, wanted to invade the United States, even if all every single country combined versus the United States it just wouldn't work. And that even with like the uh, the the disengagement of NATO and ever all those countries turned against us, we would not lose. I, I have massive, massive, massive amounts of faith, and I'm, like I said, more than happy to debate that. But that being said, I'm pretty much out of here. Peace.